Welcome, 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 welcome. How are we? So, we're doing a Boeing 788. No, 787-800. Um, this isn't actually a BA flight. Well, a lie. Sort of a BA flight. B we're going to LPMA, uh, which is Madeira. Uh, now, BA do do a... Do do... <laughs> Uh, a flight in an A320 from Gatwick to Madeira, but we're here at Heathrow in a 787. Um, reason I wanted to do Heathrow is to see if my little scenery fix had uh, worked. So it looks like it's okay. Everything isn't glitching out and I can see taxiway markings and so on. Uh, and I also wanted to see if we could get a 787 into Madeira. Now, apparently you can. There are flights that go there in a 788, so we'll see what happens. I've done a little bit of setting up. Um, just the very, very basics at the moment. It's raining, so it's pretty grim. Um, I've just had a look at our departures. We're not flying online. And the Modmuk uh, 1 Kilo looks the most plausible on runway 09 we're on actually uh at the moment winds are 0578 knots so um yeah now that's gonna give us a bit of an oddity but i think we can just do a direct oh, and i think it's actually put it in anyway uh can I roll through that? How do you scroll through? Uh, I always forget how blooming Boeings work. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. How do I get rid of that? Uh, yes, I can't remember how you scroll through on here. No, cursor. No, that killed it. Right, well, let's just zoom out. Oh, wait, it's drawn a line. Yeah, Merrick. So there we go. That That is fine. If we zoom in enough on here, do we get the stands? No, we do not. Um, well, let's start keying some stuff in at least. Uh, so, as far as I know, this is all set up. I've just done that off camera. Um, so, I'm reasonably happy with all that. This is done on the EFB for our takeoff. Yeah, wet, wet, wet. Um, and we've sent that across. So, that all looks pretty good. So, we can initialize the flight, terminal charts. Complete. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Right, well, that's sort of worked. Um, so we'll use that. Why not? Um, now, I'm going to want weather. Traffic's going to be irrelevant because we're offline. And this one I want to be... Not that bug. I want that on the ND and then I want that. No, that's all right, that's fine like that. Uh, so checklist. So parking brake needs to come on skis. There we go. Lovely. Fuel control switches to cut Good off. Place. Oh, dudes shouting. I forgot we had a co-pilot. So transponder can go to uh, receive only. Seat by identified by the words no children 
device. Therefore, you will be advised of the use of recruited devices such as personal computers and compact disc players if permitted. A complete list of recruited devices may be found in the magazine. Well, there you go. Consider yourself told. Um, so let us get our cruise altitude, flight level 390, no step climb. Oh, come on, man. Be here all day scrolling this bad boy. 390, there we go. Happy days, that's all keyed in. We should be able to use uh, VNAV anyway. Um, excellent. So is that that checklist done? Fuel control switches to, oh, cut off. There we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So before start checklist. Pa Flight deck door needs to be closed and locked. I assume it is. Didn't open it. Yeah. Uh, passenger signs can come on. They're on auto. That's fine. Ping pong works. Good. I need to test that. Um, the Alexi take off action to this break is being structured standard reject procedures. Will the part be able to sit on the initial altitude? In the event of emergency return will coordinate with ATC. Uh, you will fly the airplane on the checklist and uh, coordinate with the uh, air traffic control company and the flight attendant. Any questions? Uh, what was the meta? That's a question. 1004. So 1004 goes in there. You might just see that. I don't know. Uh, v speeds should all be done. However, wouldn't be a bad idea to double check that. Um, oh, cost index needs to go in. I'm not entirely sure I put fuel in. That would be good, wouldn't it? 21,156 tons of fuel total. Uh, no, I've killed that. Uh, so, twen 21. Point two tons of fuel. Our zero fuel weight is fourteen seven six one four. That's close enough, I guess. And that's it on the performance in it. That one's done. Uh, oh, that was the one we just done. Take off. Right here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So engine acceleration height 800 feet seems a smidge low. Acceleration height 1,500 looks okay. There's our V speeds 131,137,144. Sexy, that's done. Good, okay. And then everything else is done, so that can go to the progress page. Excellent. So beacon lights can come on. If you hold your head at just the right angle, you'll see it. <laughs> um, beacon lights can come on. Nav light can come on. Logo wing can come on. Fan dubby dozy. Uh, now, I always forget, how do you actually load fuel onto this aircraft? Let me just try this. 25038, what did I want? Ah, oh, that's close enough for me. We're a little bit heavier, but meh, that's fine. Okay, so we can assume passengers are on. So, and the cargo is on. So I don't think you actually have to do anything. Uh, I did it all in the dispatcher. So it works. Right. 
The four star passenger signs fine. That's done. That oh, we've just done that one. The four taxi. Uh, right. So we actually need to start now. Um, so a poo needs to come on. So we're currently on external power. Uh, that's all fine. That's all fine. Let me just do a quick once over to make sure everything is actually on. The IRSs are on. It's the inertial reference system. Cool. Yeah, right. So we can start the APU, which is, I always forget where the plumbing APU is on here. It's one of the twiddly dials. I know that. There it is. On electrical, of course, that would make perfect sense. And how would you actually say? No, I don't want it on that one. No, I don't particularly want it on that one. So, okay, fine, fair. Uh, not that one. Button bash until you find you until you find the thing you're looking for. It's going to be systems. It's going to be electrical. APU, or oh, is it going to be electrical? It's not going to be any of them. Oh, APU gen, there we go. So we'll just wait for the APU to actually come up. There we go, APU's on, so we can get rid of the external power. Click and then we can get rid of external power and the chocks. So APU is started. Can we see the gate? Yes, we can. There it is. You can just see it there. The exhaust gate. In fact, that'll be the intake gate. The exhaust will be there. For some reason, we've still got a cargo door open. Now it's apparently closed. Yes, it is. Right, there we go. All ready. So we're going off zero 09. We're currently facing zero 09. Uh, going off left. So we want to push back tail left. So parking brake can come off. We need to disconnect. Apparently not. I know that's not how you. I know that's not how you do it on the Boeing, and I don't care. And yes, we can do a dual engine start because the APU is an absolute monster on this thing. use a monster and so are the engines big 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 engines on this so then before takeoff we can sort of um, get ahead of the game here anti-ice is over thought it was over there maybe not oh anti-ice is here yeah it wasn't far off uh, we can stop the push back there. That's good enough for me. Parking brake can come on. So anti-ice is fine. Recall. Fuel pump. Fuel low centre. Well, we haven't got any fuel in the centre, so that's that problem solved. Elect gen off R2. Interesting. Why was that off? Well, anyway, it's not anymore. Engines are up, so a poo can come off. There we go. And the APU genis can come off. I think you can just leave them on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dark cockpit, isn't it? Um, so recall is now checked. Good. Auto brake will go to RTO. That's this one down here. Rejected takeoff. Flight controls. 
full left, full right, neutral, full up, full down, neutral, you can just see it down here, let me get a better view for the rudder, rudder, full left, full right, neutral, flaps, flaps five, Round equipment is, yeah, clear, why not? So there we go. Well, let's get our taxi on. We're burning fuel, so let's uh, let's get this show on the road. So taxi lights can come on. I can't quite see that, but I know it's that one. Yeah, it is. And... You watch that wreck our frame rate. Oh no, not too bad. That is really annoying, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to leave it on just because it's, it's hilariously annoying. Let Jen off. Oh yeah, it is going to moan about that then. So that needs to be on. Uh, brake check. Ha 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 ha. Work. And we'll taxi at Bravo since we're going anti clockwise. Image of the brakes. So we've got a bit of a Ryanair taxi going on there. It's thinking about the wet textures. Not the worst turn I've ever done in the world, but room for improvement. Oh yeah, of course, and we're, we're at Terminal 5, so we're here. We are here. So flaps checked, all good on that side of Ting's. Oh, we're going to be up in the air in no time, boys and girls. Yes, we are. So, lights on. Strobe on. Transponder on. I feel like uh, John... What's his name? Contenders! Some of you are too young to know what that means. <laughs> uh, uh, but maybe not, I don't know. John Anderson, Gladiators. Um, okay, so that's fine, that's good. We'll do a ping pong, just because you can never get enough ping pongs. Auto throttle can come on. I always forget where the... there it is. So, no blue. Or yellow, is it? Could be, I think. And the Boeing. Doors are on auto. That's one thing I always forget to do. I think it's automatically set anyway. Whatever. Be fine. Damn, those wipers are... Flipping annoying. <laughs> well, don't worry. Once we get airborne, we'll turn them off because typically you wouldn't need them then anyway. So, right, let's get this show on the road. Oh yes, we are accelerating. What do we think to that up display? Do we want that on? Don't know why I'm asking. I'm not streaming. Is it? Rotate. Yes, yeah, so we're a little bit heavier than calculated. The flex on those wings, so it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, terrain. terrain! 
Get wrecked! There's no blooming terrain! Did I pull the gear up a smidge too early? I think I probably did. Right, autopilot on because I'm lazy. And we'll go to VNAV and LNAV. Flaps one. There's a speed down, 180 knots. And flaps up already, wowzers. Okay, so logo and wing lights can come off, taxi lights can come off. That was a bit of a hawky balky turn, wasn't it? Well done, aircraft. Auto brakes are sorted. Okay, so after takeoff, gear up, flaps up. Simple as that. Ooh, a bit laggy. We've already done it, mate. Gear up, flaps up. Oh, I can click and drag and mouse wheel on that. That's nice. I like that. Very good. Very good. Yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm not um, amazing at flying this aircraft. So, what I want to see on here is... I want weather, I want the VSD on, and I want waypoints on. Your data is pretty good. It tells you what time you're going to be there. Like it. Me likey likey a lot. Smash in. Well, we're on our merry way. It was as simple as that. Maybe I'll grow a liking for these Boeing things after all. But new Boeing things after all. Old ones, 742 and the 70. Yeah, love it. Love it to death. Uh, we will be doing more of those, I promise. I, yeah. I just absolutely love it. I just need to um, relearn SIVA, the inertial navigation system, because it's one of those things that uh, if you don't use it regularly, you sort of forget a little bit. Um, but yeah, so all the pressurization and everything, that's all done automatically for you, so you don't have to touch anything up top. So, um, Just easy, easy peasy. Speed limiters on 250 knots, still below transition, so we're at 6,000 feet altitude. Remember, 6,000 feet altitude. As soon as we break through the London transition, which is uh, 7,000 feet, then we'll be on flight levels on a standard pressure of 1013 millibar or 1013 hectopascals if you prefer. Um, and up we go, we'll say transition. Or not. Well, that was transition, so we'll go to standard. And you see our altitude does a little bit of a weird jump. Oh, and that's automatically gone to standard. Fan dabby dozy. Do we need to put that into the middle? No, we don't on this. A lot of Boeings, you've got gear up, gear down, and then gear like middle position. Don't do anything. 
Um, you don't have to do that on this plane, which is nice. Yeah, we're, we're, we're tanking it. As soon as we break through flight level 100, lights will come off and the speed restriction will be lifted, assuming that there's no speed restriction on the uh, SID, the standard instrument departure that we're flying, which is this uh, route here. This is predefined on the charts. There we go, there's 10,000 feet, so lights off. Fantastic. And yes, the speed restriction was lifted. And we'll speed up to our climb speed. I always forget how you put the extra data on here. Pretty sure it's not one of those, I think it's one of these, but. Oh no, I don't want meters. That doesn't seem to do anything. Weather. Have I actually got the weather radar on? Uh, it's that one. Oh yeah, it's on auto. Oh, so much yet. Auto. They, they've taken so many leaves out of the uh, Airbus way of doing things. Reduce the pilot workload where you can. Which makes it great for us uh, sim hobby flyers because you know we're not pros. Um, it's a bit more forgiving if you forget something. Um, but I can imagine it probably gets a bit boring for the pilots in real life. I, I don't know. Maybe they enjoy flying it because they spend more time looking out the window and because the workload's lower they can actually hand fly a bit more. Which is sort of the fun of it really, isn't it? I don't know. I have no idea. I am but speculating. So let's zoom out on the FB. Oh, my fat bounce is in the way. We can have a bit of a progressy thing going on down here. Ah, uh, yeah, whatever, that'll do. You probably can't see that anyway. I'm struggling to see it. But, yeah, just a slightly uh, nicer map, I guess. Well, I'd prefer it if it was uh, dark mode. Because it sort of looks a bit out of place with these things. I prefer dark mode anyway on phones and whatever. But uh, particularly with OLED displays these days. But it looks a bit odd. I don't know if that's how it is in real world, probably it is, so that's why it is what it is, but uh, yeah, I don't, I have no idea. Um, so we want the CDU, we want the progress, and that's going to give us some interesting information. It's going to be about a four hour flight off the top of my head. Um, so... Yeah, two and a half hours to, from Marrick. Marrick's a little bit away, 60 miles away. Oh, maybe three hours then. Maybe, maybe we can... Oh, yeah, because we're going up to 390. This plane's probably a bit quicker than the A320 anyway. Um, and that's on a cost index of zero. I don't know. I don't know the numbers um, off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah. We're not going to do the whole flight, um, right, I'm going to skip cruise, um, when we get, yeah, when I get fed up, which will probably be in a minute or two, uh, and then we'll jump to the top of descent. Um, I'm going to fly it, but uh, yeah, not a huge amount of point in you guys sat watching a plane in cruise, it looks dull as hell, doesn't it? Um, what I should do, should do is have a look to see if any clever cookies have got some chase plane cameras. Seven, eight, eight. 
Oops. Quality wings seven eight seven dash eight are the exact words I need to use for that to work. Oh yeah, there we go. Right, download all the things. Oh, there was people. There's people in the plane. <laughs> no way. Brilliant. So this might just get a bit sickly while I just download them all. Top view. Low T. Yeah, all right, we'll take it. Tail. All right, we'll take it. Chase. We'll take it. Gears. Oh yeah, I do like that one. Wing left. Oh, look at the bend on the wing. Look at the flex. Oh, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. That is the thing I absolutely love about the 7.8. Size of those engines. They are gigantic. Right, that's all the ones by FSFX packages. I let, yeah, why not? That's, oh, see, this is just, people have done all the thing for me. There's the pedestal, that's the MCP. Have the co-pilot, yeah, download all the things. <gasps> Look at that! Jump seat, yeah, we'll have it, we'll have it. Lights, yeah, take it. Oh, you absolute beauty of a thing, Chase Plane. Oh, I love you so much. There's no GoPro one. Let's make a GoPro one. So we need one down, like, where you would shove a GoPro. So there. A GoPro nose. Check. There we go. And then I like the one that we have on the bus as well, which is the one where you stick your GoPro up here. Something like go back a bit. Let's have it in a realistic spot where you could actually physically put the GoPro. So pretty much there, clipping on there like that. Like that. Save new preset. GoPro. High right. Noise. Very nice indeed. And you can see the FBs, and this is all interactable, of course, when it's not lagging out. Yeah, no, that killed it. Uh, <laughs> Right, what do I bother? And then we can go back to my normal view that I fly in. Yeah, no, I've completely, completely balked that. Yeah, probably balked it. Right, never mind. <laughs> That goes that plan. Cool. Alrighty. So we will skip forwards. Um, you'll see a little jump cut. And that'll be probably top of descent. Um, we're at what we're at flight level 300 at the moment. Just there or thereabouts. Going up to 390. So we'll either come back at top of drop. Or if I feel like yabbering on for another couple of minutes. I'll be some point in cruise. See you then. Oh, we're back, we're back. FSX crashed on me as well. Brilliant, yay. Um, so, we're nearly at top of drop. I've pretty much get, got everything loaded back in. Uh, so I think we are all right. Um, a few lights going on wouldn't be a mess. Uh, and I think everything else is fine. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, but that was a bit of a bugger. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, so we can do our landing uh, data first of all. In fact, no, to the light, we need to go on this one. Wind is 2205 knots, so unfortunately, we can't do the fun approach into Madeira, which is a bit of a shame, but um, not the end of the world. And we want the Lydra 5 Alpha. Execute. There we go. So that puts that in there. Um, that's going to give us a discontinuity. That's where it crashed last time, where I clicked that button. But now it looks like it's fine. So if we have a quick zoom it in on that. Yeah, there we go. That's absolutely fine now. Um, so I'll zoom out of there. And we will do something like that. Now on here, I want the VSD. Uh, train more weather, no weather on there, uh, data, waypoints, that'll probably do, right that's fine, okay cool, um, and then we need to do our init for approach, we'll be doing flap 30, So it's going to be tight getting down here. Copy FMC data. Is it going to do all of it? No, it's not. Uh, wind, runway is dry at least. Wind is two, what was it, two two zero two two zero slash five. Outside air temperature is a lovely twenty degrees. QNH one zero two two. That's nice. Uh, it's going to be manual, flap 30, no anti-ice, spoilers, auto, brakes, 2. Um, now, yeah, uh, not like that. So zero fuel weight. Oh, see, this is all gone hawky borky now as well. Kilograms, please. Uh, and that's all I need to do on there. Uh, no, what do I want? What do I want? I want that one. And then I want the ND up there. Lovely. Cost index was zero. So 147, um, okay cool, right, this is starting to come back together again now. Will it now copy the landing weight? No, will it chuff? So 147 tonnes, our arrival fuel is going to be 10 tonnes, so 158 tonnes. VREF, add 5, fairly standard there, and calculate. Right, London distance available is reasonable, and we can get in just on auto break 2, but I've got to not float it. So I think I'm going to go auto break 3, just to be on the safe side. Well, it's, it's not playing it that safe, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, it'll do. Um, so, top of drop is. We already passed it. How far have we got? Oh no, we've still got. Oh, we've still got a bit of a ways to go yet. Um, no, 
it's a bit noisy, but I'm going to zoom in in a sec. Oh yeah, we've still got a couple hundred miles, oh, several hundred miles to go. And um, yeah, the reloading sort of sent everything a bit, uh, a bit wonky. So that's all ready to rock and roll. Hello, cats. Yeah, right, cool, okay, that's fine. We seem we seem to be all right again now. Um, yeah, I'd literally just started this point and then it, it just crashed, crashed the desktop. Little CTD. Um, that was on, that was on. Yeah, and because everything else is auto, we're actually in pretty good position here. We may lose the co-pilot because it, it'll be wondering what the hell's just gone on uh, and you know it'll be waiting for us to like do our cockpit preparation checklist or something daft um, which obviously we've already passed that point so yes okay still a bit of a ways to go um, I was clearly a lot closer this was just the last auto save so we'll have a quick pause here, uh, it'll just be a, a jump cut to you guys and uh, we'll be at our top of drop in about 300 nautical miles, so see you in a sec. Here we go then, how far have we got? Nine miles to top of drop, fan dabby dozy. So, it's time, it is finally time. Excellent. Uh, oh, my ND up here, please. Not quite sure what I've done wrong there, but that's what I want to do. Excellent. So down we go. So I shall clear us down a bit, and then. Right, what altitude do we want to be on the charts? Uh, 3,000 feet. So there's the throttle coming back. We should be in VNAV. Yes, we are. So it started our descent. And we've got 3,000 feet for that waypoint there. I'll zoom you in a little bit. Uh, so, lovely. That's right, good. So we can go back to progress on there. And um, we're dropping in. Now, still got a little ways to go, so I will show you some of the charts. Let's have a look at some of the charts, shall we? Uh, sense screen. There we go. Lovely. Okay. So Lidro is our last flight plan waypoint, and then uh, we've decided to do the Lidro Five Alpha as opposed to the One Charlie, which arguably would be an easier approach, but it takes us quite close to Puerto Santo, um, and we're a heavy aircraft, so for noise we probably want to avoid it. So this takes us a little bit further away. So mm, seems reasonable that you know we we would do that. That takes us out um, to Abusu, which is eight miles from the Funchal uh, VOR on a radial of zero three one, and we've some radials and stuff like that on the previous video so we will know exactly when we're at this point we can key in 112 decimal 2 um, on a radial of 031 uh, and it's a DME as well because we've got the square with the dot in the middle uh, and when we're at 8 miles we know we're at Abusu and then from there we'll probably be doing a visual approach um, we're going in on 2-3 aren't we 
Uh, on to two, three. Yeah, unfortunately. So this is the fun circling approach, which would be particularly fun in a seven, eight, because whoa, that, you get close. Uh, but unfortunately, the wind has gone and swung on us. So we'll fly straight into Funchal, uh, and then from there, we'll, well, we'll be visual at that point. We've just got to watch this um, high point here, this obstacle. Um, so actually, ah, right, yeah, so this shows you for the visual. So we actually come off the Funchal VOR on a radial of 236, pretty much until we're at the runway. And it's only when we're more or less over the top of the runway that we actually turn and line up. That's going to get fruity. Um, yes, that is going to get very spicy indeed. So that's what we'll be doing. Um, and we won't be doing any of this circling stuff, unfortunately. Uh, but there we are. If I put our little pin, should not connect to simulator. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? Okay, right, well, I'm not going to get a moving map, and neither are you, <laughs> so there'd be no cheating on this one, no cheating at all, um, but I am going to pull up the chart, the so 112.2, and we'll get that keyed in then. Uh, so we want our uh, nav radio. So button bash until I find what I'm looking for. It's actually none of those. Where's the nav radio then? Oh yeah, nav. Mm -hmm. Um. That's not the screen I was looking for. I don't want a key in an ILS because it, well, it isn't. Ah, nav radio. Is it on here? Yes, it is. Um, do I want to override this? Yeah, why not? One one two decimal two and a course of zero three one. Uh, in fact, no, we might as well be straight away. It's two three six. There we go. Yeah, perfect. That's what I wanted. Jolly good. Now the Radnav should pretty much get us there anyway, but um, it's, it's always good to have uh, options available. Have it all keyed in if you need it, it's there, there's less panic, there's still, well there'll still be panic, but there's less panic if you've done a bit of preparing and whatever. And there we can see Madeira, Porto Santo here. We'll be doing a right turn fairly soon. Yes, we are. Lovely. Wouldn't you love to be there? Ay, ay, ay. So, yeah, this is going to be a tough landing. Uh, it's going to be tough to stop in time. Um, so much so, yeah, I'm going to cheese it and put auto brake four on. Um, I suppose that's the opposite of cheesing it, isn't it? But, yeah, I am. Um, Mm. I'm not confident in my flying ability of this particular aircraft, so if it was an Airbus, not a problem, you can get away with auto brake one at Madeira. Um, but yeah, th this is a big old boy, or girl if you prefer. Um, I've not asked her what she had, no, stop it Simon, stop it. Uh, yeah, so, yes. we'll see. Um, so, auto brake. I want it on, please. 
So recall is checked, notes fine, auto break is set, landing data, did we key that in, take nothing for granted, double check. We have, we've got our VREF speed, so 140 knots is our VREF with full flap. An approach briefing, yeah, we probably will have lost the co-pilot. I'm wondering if I can force it. Probably not. So we can see it coming in on the horizon there. Oh, I know what we can do. <laughs> we can do... Yeah, GoPro view. Lovely. Lovely jabbly. You can spin the GoPro round and clip through the... Uh, yeah, let's not do that then. It's my favourite view in the Airbus. No, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted either. That's the... Yeah, that's got to be my favourite in this. Just... Just a smidge lower so you can see where you're going. Oh, but then you lose your... Ah, I see why they've done it like that. Mm. It's very spacious though, isn't it? There's loads of room, like headroom and stuff. Never been on a Dreamliner, but yeah, this is... Uh, she's a big old girl. I'm just going to pull up the star again, just so I've got that. Lid row is really the point where, you know, I, I, I start caring. Oh, which is actually this next waypoint coming up here. Over to toe bed. Yeah, there we go. Uh, now, have we got any altitude? Busu at flight level 100. Well, that's clearly BS because that gives us like 10 miles to descend 100 flight levels. Yeah, let's ignore that. Clearly, not reading it properly. Oh, right, no, 4,000. Uh, Yeah, we're a bit high. Oh, well, no, the computer thinks we're all right. So we've got, like, like we've seen on the ILS, when we do ILSs then, you have your little diamond or whatever, and you have the... Oh, we have got it. You've got whether you're high or low, and the same for whether you're left or right. So we're not using a radio, per se, here. Um, we're doing what's called R... No, it's not RNAV, it's VNAV, sorry. Uh, VNAV and LNAV as you'll see on here. Um, effectively, what it is, it's a bit of a sense of fusion, so don't necessarily think of it as using a radio or using GPS. It's not a black and white thing. But the, the flight computer will use any resource it can. So if there's radios, it will use it. If it's only got GPS, it will use that. It's also using your pressure data for your height, so on and so forth. And then it's plotting in its memory the path that it thinks we should follow. So that's not necessarily a three degree glide or anything like that. Um, lots of things get factored into this calculation, your weight, um, wind, so on and so forth. But it thinks that's the best. So here we get pink diamonds or pink triangles. And this is our deviation. So that's our vertical deviation. That's our lateral deviation from where the computer thinks we should be. So it's not based upon a broadcast signal like an ILS or a glide slope uh, and localizer. Um, this is purely in the computer's memory what it thinks it should do at that particular point in time. So even though I think we're a smidge high, actually the computer's done all the calculation, it's better at this than me and I'm pretty confident I've keyed everything in correctly. That's the gotcha. If you key stuff in wrong then, well, you're the master of your own demise. But um, it thinks that we're all right. So I'm gonna gonna go with it. Um, and actually, looking at the charts, this needs to be 2,800. So let's just get that keyed in. And our decision
is pretty spicy. Our transition is 5,000. Where do you put the transition in on a Boeing? Venav? Yeah, so it's 5,000. It's not American. There we go, 5,000. Um, and then, so 236 will be our heading. So yeah, what was our decision? MDH. <clears throat> oh, it's going to be... Oh, you crike. About 11, so 1,200 feet is our decision altitude. At, yeah, decision radar altitude. So you can see it down here. 200 at the moment. That needs to read 1,200. That is mighty high. So well, this thing drops like a lead balloon when it wants to descend, doesn't it? Scroll, 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 scroll. Still scrolling, still scrolling. There we go, lovely. There's Puerto Santo. So if we'd done the um, Lidro One Hotel, was it a one alpha? I forget. We'd have been overflying this, which I didn't particularly want to do. You know, big, heavy, noisy aircraft. Don't want to. Upset the passing, uh, upset not the passengers so much. We give them a good view, but we don't want to upset the guys on the ground because they will soon be our passengers, of course. So let's go back to progress. So approach checklist, yeah, that's fine when we get there, and we seem to have the co-pilot back now. That's handy because that takes a little bit of workload off me for when I forget the flaps, and also the flap button on my joystick. Oh, you want joystick cam, right? Is joystick cam even plugged in? No, it's not. Right, sorry, no joystick cam for this one. Um, I'm in the process of sorting out my USB hubs because I can't have both cameras plugged into the same hub for some reason. Um, I don't know why they shouldn't be drawing that much power, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, the button on my joystick sort of <laughs> it's, it's just nuts. It doesn't go one at a time, it just sort of spazzes through them. Uh, which can cause a few issues. Unable to maintain VNAV descent speed, extend speed brake. So we are actually maintaining the path, but we're not going as slow as the aircraft. So the aircraft wants us where the pink stuff is. So I'm going to put the speed brakes out a bit. And that will help the aircraft slow down as well as descent. And then we get a nice view of it. Can't even see it there because of the wing flex. Pretty cool. Oh. And that is quite normal to have speed brakes out on descent. If you go on holiday, you'll notice it. <laughs> They're quite often noisy. So I'm like, you know, well, why is it noisy? It's just because of the turbulence it creates. That's the whole point. It's uh, creating turbulence and drag to slow you down and uh, also dump some of the lift from the wing. So there we go. We're maintaining proper uh, vertical deviation and our speed is slowly coming back. Don't want to be too aggressive. Guys in the back will be spilling the GNCs if we are. Um, so yeah, coming in quite nice. Approach checklist. Altimeters still on standard for the moment. 
In fact, since we've not got ATC, we may as well actually flick over to 1022. So scrolly scrolly, looking for 1022 down there. Again, YouTube's compression might mean you can't see that, but uh, if I zoom in, you can see 1022 hectopascals, or millibar if you prefer. And I do have some nice scenery for Madeira as well, for the airfield. So, so if we remember the chart, uh, we overfly this tip here, just the tip and only for a minute. And then we will swing a right and we will approach the runway at a slightly oblique angle. Um, and then at the literally the last minute, try not to smash the wing onto the floor when you do your turn which is going to be the issue in something quite so ginormous like this. Uh, and we can't pinch a bit either. We can't, you know, make that angle more acute, um, particularly because we're a big aircraft and that would cause, you know, we, we'd have wing tip clearance uh, issues to that obstacle. So we really, really have to obey it. Um, and being a big aircraft, it makes that final turn harder because we're going to be very low we're going to be going reasonably quick. Um, we've got a lot of inertia, so turning is hard. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be a bit fruity, I think. A bit fruity, but we'll see. Um, decision height's nice and high, so if I don't think it's going to happen, we'll go around. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. And you can still go around after your decision, but you know, it's. Uh, you, you try not to, you try and decide when you're at your decision altitude, that's the sort of point. But it doesn't mean you have to. It would be dangerous to land. Rule number one, stay safe. Air law, and all that goodness. So, oh actually no, we do want 3,000, well the aircraft's going to have limited it anyway, but it's 3,000 to this point and then 2,800 at this point. <clears throat> and uh, I'm slightly surprised he hasn't called for flaps yet. Oh come on. Here, one quick. And where the sound went. There we go. But uh, yeah, it's just going to think about it while it loads the scenery in. But still, huge amount of wing flex. Obviously, what this aircraft was designed to do flex the wings up, gives you uh, an inherent dihedral and inherent stability. Um, and makes the lift profile over the wing more elliptical as well, which is uh, that's a discussion for another day. It's aerodynamics. Unable to maintain descent speed. Well, you will in a minute. Uh, right, what's our flap one? 250 knots. Oh, right, okay. So I can't put the slats out yet. Oops. We need to get below 250, then I can put flat one down. And then that will help with the drag. There we go, there's the slats coming down there at the front of the wing. And that noise was just me putting the speed brakes back up. So we're looking, we're looking good. We're looking good. There's our profile to touch, or to the actual final position, and then we're visual from there. There's a busu, a busu. 
don't know why I'm looking at the map. Well, I'm looking at the chart. I haven't got a moving map. I'm purely using this. <clears throat> uh, and what's our maximum flap two is... Sorry, flap five, isn't it? 230 knots. There's no way you'll have been able to read that. It's down, down here, our flap limits. So you can't extend your flaps you know, um, faster than those numbers. You couldn't have them out faster than those numbers either. So we put some speed brake out again. A thousand feet to go, is that sound? So we're on 1022. So our altimeters are checked. Landing checklist. Speed brake will need to be on. Gear flaps. Okay, that is fine. Uh, we'll take flap five. And we're going to be going all the way down to flap four. But that really will drag us. That's the runway, isn't it? Crikey, yeah, this is going to be a tight turn. I'm going to take gear down. And I'm going to arm the speed brakes. Arm the spoilers, sorry. Crikey, yeah, this is going to get very fruity. Right, I'm, I'm by hand now, I'm completely by hand. And also throttle can get stuffed. So I'm trying to pinch a bit here. We have got a bit of wind. This little circle with the sort of flaps under it, you can just see there, uh, that's where the aircraft's velocity vector is. So that's where we're actually going. So you can see we have got a bit of a crosswind from uh, right to left there, because it's not in the middle, so it's pushing us over. That's the obstacle that we have to watch, which is why we can't come straight in. My carumba. I should probably go around here, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> gonna need a lot of rudder to get around this corner. A lot, a lot of rudder. Whoa! Almost full rudder there. Watch the wingtips. Whoa! <laughs> a lot of rudder again. That's a sideways landing. No, going around. Couldn't quite get around there. I was crabbing too much. If I put that, put that down on the deck. We'd have, uh, we'd have smashed the landing gear to bits. Okay, so flaps coming up. Gear coming up. I'm going to put the auto throttle back on. I'm going to take VNAV off. Oh. No, 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 I don't want autopilot on. No, I don't want autopilot on. Why won't it give me manual speed? I, I don't want VNAV. Oh, there we go.
Oh, right, okay, let's give that another go. That is hard. In this aircraft, that is really hard. In fact, I'd say that's harder than the circling approach. I'd be a lot more confident in an A320, but it's, you know, a much smaller plane. I think I've only ever actually done the circling approach. I didn't realise this was actually that much of a, um, uh, a sharp in turn. It's like a little S bend you've got to do. It's really interesting. Hold, 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 also by the Well, I will come in. Well, it could have gone worse. We didn't touch the ground. We were almost out of... Uh, why do I keep losing sound? We were almost out of space. There's the airfield. Um, I probably could have put it down, but it would have probably shredded the tyres. Now, that's not modelled in this. So, you know, I could have just got, got away with it, because it's a sim. Um, but I, I was hesitant that we were floating. That was my big worry with that. Um, but because we didn't have the wheels down, we couldn't have the brakes on, we couldn't have reverse thrust, we couldn't have spoilers, and we would have just fallen off the other end of the runway. But equally, you just don't want to touch down when you're crabbing like that. I mean, that would just be horrendous. Was all I should have got the speed back a bit earlier. I think. I think if we if we were good on speed and I because I um, realised our speed was a bit high. We were nowhere near V ref. We were very very fast. Um, and I couldn't just it couldn't bring the speed back. So I killed the auto throttle. Normally you wouldn't do that. Uh, and basically just went full manual. Um, you know, realistically, what we should have done is we should have done a hold to allow the aircraft to slow down rather than take manual and think you can do a better job. And there we go. It's got to be fun. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah, this thing needs a serious amount of rudder to get round corners. I wasn't prepared for that. Right, so I'm going to start bringing our, our speed back now. And we'll get fully configured before we start this procedure. It's good we can actually swing all the way around now. About 320, I'm just eyeballing this a little. But we've got the nav aid anyway, or we would have if I actually put it on the thing. Uh, stations. I'm 
not apparently. Oh, yes, we do. There it is. Okay, Dime. Shush. Excellent. Right, we're coming in at a uh, slightly more favourable angle, which is cheating a little bit, but not not a huge amount. We were coming more sort of from yeah that way. <laughs> but we're not you know we're not far off so I'm looking at the velocity vector that's this little circly thing here and that needs to be on the front of the runway. Because that's the track we need to fly. We can't cut the corner. Well, we no, we have to cut the corner. Sorry, we can't come in dead straight. Look at that angle, though. Okay, no blue. Yeah, this is better because we're going slower, although I'm still not at V-Ref. Appreciate your, you can't quite see in the resolution I can, but it's not a lot better, I promise you. Just trying to keep that somewhere near the front of the runway. Continue. It's this turn, I am not looking forward to this turn at all. This is hard. So I really want to start it early, but I know if I do that, I'm really going to float it. Right. Lots of rudder. Lots and lots of rudder. Yeah, so I started that a smidge early, really. But but it does mean I can roll out a touch. Just be naughty on the rudder to get us round. What do you mean, go around? Get stuffed. It's not a go around. Oh, an auto brake four was uh, overkill for that bad boy. Massively overkill. Manual brakes, please. Manual brakes, thank you. Well, we actually had quite a bit of runway still to go. Two hundred and something feet per minute. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to cry about that at all. Didn't quite see what it was. Was it two eighty three or two sixty three or something around there? I think it was somewhere around there. I'll take that, this aircraft, that approach. Perfectly fine, safe. A li little on the hard side, but not, you know, it's not going to kill anything. Um, you wouldn't need to uh, do any maintenance on the aircraft by the normal. So, quite happy with that. 
Would have been good if I turned my lights on. For a second we did. Uh, transponder can come receive only. And now we're going to have to find somewhere where we can park this bad boy. Because she ain't small. Glad there's no other aircraft. <laughs> probably wouldn't have got away with taxi in here. We'd have probably had to backtrack. Because our wingtip clearance here would have been fouling on the other aircraft parked up. That was fun. So a very late call on the go-around originally, but I think was absolutely the right decision. It wouldn't have been safe to touch down. Be interesting. It's always interesting watching back um, and assessing your decision making and sort of learning from it all. Poo can come on. And then we're going to go right in on the end. As I'm saying, I'm sure I saw on flight radar that a 788 has flown in here regularly. I'm not quite sure which uh, bay we're in here. Oh, we want to be on that one. As usual, my taxiing skills are the best on YouTube. What a beautiful view, though, eh? There's no way we're straight. Well, we're not miles off. And brakes. Nah. That's, uh... Oh, so interestingly, actually, we probably would have got away with taxiing down there because our wingtip wasn't as far back as this second black line. And we're going to be the biggest... Oh, yeah, but of course we're a bit further in, aren't we? Mm. Either way, yeah, this aircraft clearly does fit. You could just backtrack the runway. That would be absolutely fine. Um, and, you know, just sort of come in this way. That, that would be fairly normal. Um, we could have even parked here, it just means we wouldn't have had anyone next to us. In fact, this would have been a more appropriate spot now, looking at it. Uh, but yeah, certainly doable. I'm looking forward to doing the return flight. Well, I'll say that. I'm looking forward to taking off from here because, well, we, as we saw on the go-around, you have to turn immediately. As soon as your wheels are up, and you're not going to clobber the wing on the floor by rolling, um, you've got to turn. You've just got to get away from this hill. Um, and we were light, don't forget, on that go around. We burned all our fuel. On the return, we're going to be fully fueled. Well, not fully fueled, but fully fueled for that trip. So, um, yeah. That'll be interesting. I might just do the takeoff. I'm not particularly bothered about the entire flight, but I might just do the takeoff just as a little uh, a cheeky little video there. Uh, so we'll turn them off. That's all off. Don't really care about anything else. That can come off. Uh, oh, I don't know what we need to do. We need to do that one, that one. Obviously no jetways here. So we'd just be using the doors, I would imagine. Yeah, well, that'll do.
and the stairs would come and you you'd know you get the bus and all that sort of thing if you've uh, you've done it before and you're familiar with that so there we go hope you enjoyed see you next time <laughs>